<laughs> so sorry. Was I even afraid wife. when I did that? Oh my goodness. This is gonna be me. I feel like I'm too. This is. <laughs> Do you have to actually remove yeah, the it's cushion? Fine. I know. I was just just feeling quite like comforted by that. Sorry, Han. No, Rupert has asked for three things from Father Christmas. Um, a horse, it's a toy horse, don't worry. A piano, small a toy piano. piano. A toy piano. <laughs> uh, and a baby sister, a real one. This is not about us. This no, it's about uh, all the questions. That this is asked. a cheerful episode of Ask Your Lesbian Mothers. This is very, yeah. Okay, we're. <laughs> oh, really? What the? Yeah. We are actually, we're doing okay, if you're worried. Don't worry. We are doing okay. Yeah, we are. We're I was about to post. Trying again. I was going to post on my Instagram for like, you know, if anyone knows. I do it like, you know, every two or three months. And the last post was, um, or basically I was going to post because it was my mum's birthday yesterday. And for those who don't know, my mum actually passed away like 11 years ago. And I was just going to talk about like, you know, loss and December and how Christmas can often mean like times of remembering the people who aren't around and things like that. Then I looked at my last post and it was about Walter and like the passing away of Walter. And I was like, I can't post. It's also his birthday in December. And I was like, I can't post this one. Like, Otherwise people will literally be like, are you alright Claudia? You're, like, you're only <laughs> posting about death. <laughs> like, oh. But no, it has actually, it's been alright. It is also birthday in, it is, all, it is also birthday. I have not had much sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Rupert has a virus. <laughs> <laughs> it is also my birthday in December. Yes it is. Yeah, I am now. I mean that has happened though. Do people know? Oh, Already yeah. happened. People know how old Guess you are. How old Guess I how old she is. Have you told people? We <laughs> told people. We told people. We filmed your thirtieth birthday party. Like only people who were like so long ago. Actually. Only people who were. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> kind of gave it away there. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, this video is one for the uh, <laughs> one for the long watches. Yeah. No, it's not. Hi. People who can it put up with our <laughs> rambling rambles. Hi, if you've stumbled upon this video, um, nice to meet you. Uh, we're Jessie and Claude. We are a lesbian couple. This is my YouTube channel. <laughs> she doesn't always stuff cushions up her jumper. We've been trying to make a baby for the last year. Yeah. It's not been happening. We already are the proud mummy and mama of a two and a half year old. We are. He's uh, wonderful. But we would very much like to add to our family. Yes. Yes. Our family is not yet, not yet complete. So um, follow along if you aren't already to like find out how that goes. When we'll have one. We want to know too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if there's anyone from the future watching, we like spoilers, so please. Jessica loves love spoilers. A spoiler. You would love your entire life to be spoilers. I, I mean, would. I, would, I would like my entire I would, life I would like my entire life mapped out for me, in front of me, and I could just know exactly well, what's no, going what to happen it wasn't always good each stuff. year. Well, that's fine. I would, I would know it was going to come, and I'd be able to plan for it emotionally and mentally. It's that whole, like, that whole thing, like, if you know of something, will that happen? You know, it's yes, like... Yes, because it's on the plan. No, but if it was like you will write a book and get published, but it will be a flop. You'll be like, I'm not going to write it. Or well, I guess you'd write a bad book. You'd just be <laughs> writing it like, Meh. You'd write it Could no, I write yeah, this sentence true. better? Yes, you'd I could, it. but I can't be yeah, asked. I know it's going to be a flop. Knowing not to put your full effort in because you're like, well, that's going to fail anyway. Or you'd be like, I can change destiny. That probably would be you, yeah. Yeah, that would, that would be me. That would be me. <clears throat> Actual questions. What were both of your family tra Christmas traditions growing up? Since Jessica is part Swedish and Claudia is part Malaysian, will you be continuing any of those traditions with Rupert? I would say Christmas tradition. It is funny because like, what is a family tradition? Sometimes you don't get that it's a tradition because it's like just- Or you don't understand that it's very unique to yeah, your family. Yeah, exactly. You don't understand it's unique. Like, if you've ever seen Elsa and Anna's like Christmas, Olaf's Christmas or whatever, and they're like, what's our tradition? We need to find our Christmas tradition. And they're like, Olaf's our Christmas tradition. But they didn't realize, you know, because it's like been their thing always. So I have no idea. <laughs> 
Mm. I didn't have any specific Chinese, Malaysian Christmas things because it's like when my mum was growing up, it wasn't really something that was really celebrated. I think you don't really do. Yeah, well, one, she wasn't brought up Christian. My mum moved to England when she was 18 years old to study nursing. So I think she just took on all the like British Western traditions of Christmas anyway. And then English. And my dad is, you know, English. So we didn't, we just had the normal standard like English traditions of having a real Christmas tree, not a fake one. And like, that's not specifically English. That's just like, that was our family thing. We'd have Bucks Fizz on Christmas day, mm -hmm. even when I was like five. <laughs> We would have smoked salmon to start with brown bread and then a roast turkey with all the trimmings and we'd watch the Queen's speech and then we'd open our presents. We got to open our stocking presents from Santa before, obviously in the morning. And like, it's pretty standard kind of traditional Christmas day, I would say. Did you go to church on Christmas day? No, we sometimes went on Christmas Eve, like yeah. the midnight mass one, yeah. when we were Did a bit you older. do a Boxing Day walk? Yeah, well we did a walk Christmas day walk too, because we had, we had a Labrador. So we had to walk out there. <laughs> so my mom would I mean, put... that's just, that's not necessarily a Christmas tradition. That's just, you had a Labrador. <laughs> yeah, we went, also a Boxing Day walk. It's like, we walked every day. So a Boxing Day walk is not a tradition. Oh yeah, well, I don't know. When we get to my family. <laughs> and then, well, yeah, we would always, to be okay. So Christmas day, me, me and my sister get out, we'd open our stockings, uh, usually like on my mom and dad's bed or, or with each other in our room if we couldn't like, you know, if they were like, if it was like five in the morning or something. And then my mom would get up early and put the turkey in and then we'd come down, we'd have like a little light breakfast and um, whilst everything was in the oven, we'd go for a nice family walk. We'd come back, we'd all help um, prepare the, the lunch. Like my job was always laying out the smoked salmon and buttering the bread and cutting the lemon. My job was always preparing the starter and laying the table. Yeah. Who, who decorated your house? Well, that was way, way done before Christmas day. All right. Some people only decorate on Christmas Eve. No, we decorated on like, my mum's birthday was on the 19th of December. So we didn't buy the tree until like around then, like after we'd broken up from school and around my, about on or after my mum's birthday kind of time. Bold, that's bold. Well, she didn't really like having the tree too much, like early. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's all the pine, because when we were younger, you couldn't buy these like Norman firs, which didn't drop their needles. Can you remember? You can only buy the good old common spruce, which always drop their needles. And we're at, and when you have Labrador, absolute pain. Because <laughs> they like whack their <laughs> the tail against it and all the branches yeah. drop their pine. That's our tra tra tradition, yeah, yeah, yeah. hoovering. We always had our Christmas tree delivered to our house because I think my mum had made a deal with the man who delivered Christmas trees when we first moved in. Oh, you always said And we lived there for 17 years. And he always delivered the Christmas tree and like two massive boxes of satsumas. Nice. And every year he did this for 20 pounds. Every year. I mean, like, 17 many, years. Seven, for, like, the first year was probably like, <laughs> was on like the right price. You're like, yeah, that's a good price, good price. Was he like... Maybe first three years, you're like, good price. Was <laughs> mother, like, somehow. No. And then as it goes on, you're like, is this... Is he okay? <laughs> Does he know how to price his stuff? Yeah, because I'm pretty sure by like the time I was about 18, Christmas trees were still about 60 quid or something for a yeah. big tree. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. These were also massive trees because they went in the stairwell yeah. of our house. So, yeah, I don't know what was going on there. <laughs> I always decorated in my house. That was always my job. Mm -hmm. I was banished from decorating from quite an early age. I, mean, like, I did it with my sister when we were both little and then I think my sister, because she's three and a half years old, got to a certain age where like order was a little bit more perfected. She, I was just like locked out of the room. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's a bit harsh. And now I just don't like doing it. That's but I think that's an ingrained thing. Like, you know, when someone tells you you're not good at something, oh, you yeah. just tell yourself, oh, well, I don't Is like it. Is that why you do, don't do it? I don't like it. Because you think you're not good at well, it. Well, I don't think I am good at it. No. You never tried. No, I have tried. In my... <laughs> In my experience with you, the whole nine, nine years, years, years we've never decorated. once decorated a Christmas tree or gone near decorating a Christmas tree. <laughs> no, I don't like it. You put the lights up outside our house. Yeah, I did that. You're like, it's a handyman job. She'll do it. I'll put the tree up. You do? I like getting the tree when we used to get a real one. We don't have a fake one. And I like putting we it up. We have underfloor heating. 
Yes, and last year we had to buy two trees because by like the 23rd of December, it was literally just- It was dead. <laughs> it was like a stick with branches in a pot. Don't get a real Christmas tree if you have underfloor heating. It's a terrible idea. And no. if you're all us and forget to water it as frequently as we should. <laughs> um, yeah, so we always had a real Christmas tree. It was always very large because it went in our stairwell. So I could decorate it by going up the stairs. That's so cute. As well, which is quite nice. Yeah, it is quite cute yeah. actually. What do you think about it? Mine was like the anti banishment from decorating because my parents were like, oh, Jessica, you're so annoying thinking that colours have to go together. You do it. So I did all the decorating. Yeah, I think that's how it kind of got with my <laughs> sister as she got older. My like mum wanted to do it with her. And then they did it together as a little joint experience. And then I think sometimes it was just left to my sister. And Which that's is hilarious because your sister is so now like multicolored yeah. and she's really... And then I guess once she started getting more into like, I don't really care, then my mum started doing it. Yeah. But like my mum was like a bit like, she couldn't buy, like we had, she was a bit of a hoarder, my mum. And, um, <laughs> and like, we'd have like, we'd have baubles. So one year it might be blue and silver. Yeah. Theme. And then the next year it might be like red and gold. But then the next year it'll be like green and gold. And then the next year it'll be back to like silver and gold. So we had to have like no. every colour. Like every no, year absolutely was not. like a different combination. Absolutely not. So Claudia does have some hoarding tendencies. Um. <laughs> Never. <laughs> and I. You can't see it right I'm now, but a... it's <laughs> Thing. And I am a stickler for keeping to a theme because I think if we keep to a theme, we'll have fewer items. So I'm like, if we just buy. Jessica is also incredibly messy. I know, I'm, me I'm messy, yes, but I'm not a hoarder. So I think if we just buy red and gold ornaments yeah. and things within that. Also, it's only theme, up for like a week, like two weeks of the year. Then. Does it really need to be perfect. by the time it comes around again? That's not true. Our tree is up for a month. Okay, by the time it comes around 48 weeks later, do you really like, oh, I'm so bored of gold and red, we need to have no. a different colour? Classic Christmas <laughs> colours. I perfect. Like, I like gold and That's red. That's all yeah. you need, also, and then you don't need to store so many yeah, extra Yeah, and I think it's something quite nice about getting out the traditional, like, um, you know, decoration yeah. that you get out each year. Exactly. Because our ones at home growing up, because they get rotated every six years, by the time you get it out, it's like mouth, it's like eaten <laughs> by mice, or it's like completely. I don't like, remember. It's it. just like disintegrated into like, yeah. so you pick it up and it falls off its thread, and it's like. So we generally actually had Christmas at my grandparents in the Lake District, and they had that classic 80s, like multicolored string of lights. And they also had the clips for their Christmas tree where they originally put candles yeah. on the Christmas tree. And um, then you could put candy canes in them. Oh. No? no. I guess they're too heavy. They would have just toppled out. I mean, Unless you put blue tack in the bottom. No, no, so they're actual, they hold candles. Yeah, that's what I mean. But if you didn't want candles in them, because it's like a fire hazard, and you can just use twinkly lights. Oh, you mean they did, you mean they actually did put candles in them? Yeah, you can put candles <laughs> in them. <laughs> I thought you meant like, they were just so old that they, they did hold candles but we didn't. That's how you presented it with your voice in oh, my mind. Anyway, no. So my job there was also, I decorated the Christmas table and we'd all get like all the family together, all my aunts and cousins and have a big family thing. Um, but my grandparents, I'm now realizing looking back, didn't seem to do much of the work. Yeah. So it was worked out very well for them. Well, to be they fair. They didn't really do the cooking well, no, but or just the decorating. Like, you were, by the time you have the memories of that, you were like probably at least six. Yeah. And then you're the youngest <laughs> granddaughter. <laughs> My papa was 80 when I was born. So no, he should not so, be. I mean, I'm not hello. saying he should have been doing any work. I'm just saying I would like this to be our future. Rupert is two. Yeah. And when we go to my dad's for Christmas, we are, I'm cooking. Oh yeah, <laughs> and, and I'll be decorating. Yeah, like, you, as you know, like, I think that's just how it is. That's how it works. Grandparent My dad was saying that about, like, sure. I said, oh, do you think if mum was alive, we would, you would host Christmas, or do you think you'd still have Christmas? I think we would be going to your parents' house, but we would just be doing the work. My, like, Swedish family traditions were that we would uh, have Santa Lucia on Christmas Eve, I mean, traditionally it's the 13th, but instead my parents had a Christmas party every single year, as close to the 13th as possible, and that was in Bristol where we lived, mm -hmm. and had like friends and family come. And then on Christmas Eve, with my wider family, we would do St. Lucia and I would get, I was the youngest girl in the family for many years, so I got dressed up in a long white dress, 
with a red sash and a crown of candles on my head. Yeah. And I got to carry in a... And you sing like and... Swedish songs and drink. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so we, and then we'd sing like Swedish Christmas carols. Yeah, have a smart Do board. Swedish drinking games, have a smorgasbord. Um, we'd open presents on Christmas Eve. I think what you should so carry it on presents. is like Christmas Eve this year. You're like, oh, what are we doing? I was like, oh, nothing much. But like we do it normally because yeah. our tradition was always having a seafood meal, which is similar. Like a smorgasbord board is usually seafood yeah, yeah. heavy. It's a lot of seafood. Like, um, Except for my nana's Boston beans. I forgot to tell you actually, this Christmas Eve, we're not doing um, a Christmas Eve dinner, um, but we're going, out, we're going out for dim sum. Is this new? Oh. Yes, yeah, just this got, is news to me. It's just book today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going for dim sum. That could be our new Chinese tradition. It could be. Look at that. That's a new family tradition for us. Um, and then Christmas Day, my I have one specific aunt and my dad who would do the cooking. That's it. No, I mean, I'm um, a bit like that in the kitchen, aren't I? You can't go near her. <laughs> All you are doing there is messing up her system. Yeah. So my job was to lay the table and to write out everyone's place things. And um, <laughs> what? I listen to your family. No, no, but you I, are I swear so I rude. spoke for less time. I mean, Clara can put in the time stamps here. Next one. And Next then we went question. for a walk. <laughs> Next question. We're not even on version two. <laughs> That's this one. Oh, Georgia, how do you manage being Jessica's career? I think it's meant to be Kara. Am I your career? Am I your entire life? <laughs> yes, darling. Your wife and life. <laughs> you are my entire life. I've put everything into you. I am you. very much your career to Jessica. It is true. I'm such a project. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't think you'd call it a career, more of a job. I don't think people realise how much of an equal relationship this is. <laughs> like, yes, it may, it may appear that she does a lot of uh, physical I do do things. a lot, it doesn't appear. <laughs> I got it. Yes, you do a lot. Cool. Do a lot, I do a lot of, of physical things. things. Yes, like yes. washing and driving and cleaning and cooking. And I'm, a, I'm the night nurse as well. I do all of the, the nighttime duties. Because I get rejected at night. That's unrelated. But also you're really painful. bad. I mean, like when I do need extra help. Well, I mean, you've tried. Like you get whenever I night, try to get up. The other night, me and Rupert had a standoff downstairs because at five in the morning, I decided to wake up and bit demand of. Elsa biscuit. And I was like, we don't have any Elsa biscuits. What are you on about? What even is an Elsa He's biscuit? Like, oh, I've never had an Elsa biscuit. I was like, do you biscuit? want this biscuit? He's like, no. And like, threw it across the kitchen. I was like, do you want this biscuit? He's like, no. I mean, he shouldn't have a biscuit at five o'clock in the morning anyway. And then I was just like, I don't even know what you want. Oh, we were shouting at each other. Well, not every time we stand off. So I was like, Jessica, we need you. And then you came downstairs and she mediated it. And then she was like, he's a baby. Give him a cuddle. Go back to bed. <laughs> And I was like, oh, well, anyway, which worked. And um, and then she went off back to bed. And then the next morning I was like, I'm sorry I wake you up to come and mediate that. But I do need you, like, just even just to, like, put sense into me and remind me of my <laughs> motherly duties. And she's like, what? I was like, you came downstairs, remember the biscuits? And she's like, no. She's like, you do know I take a lot of medication. And I was like, Okay, well, she had no memory. <laughs> yeah, that's actually happened quite a few times, though. Well, at least you can function. When you're like, my God, this thing happened last night. It was crazy, wasn't it? When we had to do this and this and this. And I'm like, sure, wow, that does sound like an exciting night you had, Claudia. Were you hallucinating me or was I definitely there? Like, you know, pour my life and soul. <laughs> all my deepest inner secrets to you and then you're like yeah darling and then the next day i'm like i'm so glad we shared that moment you're like what <laughs> i mean if you do it to me after i've gone to sleep yeah but that's often when i'm thinking about things when it wakes me up <laughs> Okay, to clarify, it's only if I have gone to sleep and then you wake me up and go back to sleep. Don't worry, I'm not like a complete danger. But yes, otherwise our relationship is actually quite but Yes, the point is I do add things. She emotionally supports me. She reminds me that our child is a baby. <laughs> Shout at him about a biscuit at five in the morning. <laughs> and what else? <laughs> Your face. <laughs> You're the one who's supposed to be continuing to fill in the blanks. She rubs my feet. 
I do. She loves me no matter what. I do. You are a very good mother, a very good wife. This video is not about that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Following up, next question. Best place to find nice festive clothes and how to be sustainable with it. I have been loving your matching jumpers. The answer is your local charity shop in January. Think ahead. Yeah. I see things now that I'm like, oh my goodness, that's so beautiful. Wow, how Christmassy, how wonderful, how lovely. And I just keep the tab open, ready for January when it goes on sale. Mm. And I know that if it's all sold out, then that's fine. I'm not going to be heartbroken about mm. it. But if I manage to get it for a quarter of the price and I could use it next Christmas, yeah. that's and great. That is a little bit sustainable because it would have just either gone to waste or yeah. like... These things do end up in landfill. Get rid of. You could also go to um, Christmas crafting workshops. Yes. Where like you know where you make some like where you can embroider embroidery do something embroidery related. Yes, you can. You can make your jumpers match by embroidery. Yeah, like you could probably find a workshop that like you take an old sweater just like my plain one and do some embroidery. So then you're like learning a skill but also mm -hmm. like making it Christmassy and it's also like a fun thing to do. And that's quite sustainable because you're already using something you have. And you don't need to start with the same base jumper if you're putting the same design on it. We it's actually made a video thing. about how to make Christmas, well not how to, but it was just like who's is the best Christmas jumper. That's the next remember. We did. Who won? My jumper was no, absolutely won. massive, <laughs> so what did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we accidentally bought the oversized jumpers. Yeah. I don't know what was going on there. Jessica, how do you cope with having a chronic illness at Christmas time, taking time off afterwards? Well, Jessica's actually being really good. She's taking two weeks off. I am. Go me. I'm gonna spend lots of time with my wife and child. Yeah. And not worry too much. Because I actually feel really good. Like a lot of people have been asking me, oh, you hit a million. Like, wow, that's such a big thing. And it was my one of my goals for this year. To be fair, it was one of my goals for last year, but that I clearly didn't have. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it has been something that I feel in a way has made me a bit more secure. Okay. Well, it's, just it's just that mile, it's just like a tangible milestone, isn't it? Yeah. You, can, you can see it and like, now she's got a plaque that we still have to get framed. You can <laughs> feel it. You can just occasionally stroke it if you like. Um, <laughs> but you shouldn't because it marks really easily. <laughs> That's why we're going to go to get it framed. Touch it. Um, but yeah, so it is it is just a, one of those things where you kind of feel like, oof. Okay, good. I'm, I'm doing something going in the right direction and I did feel this summer a real down point um, because things felt quite tough for a while, especially with my content and I didn't know whether I was making things that I, like, that what I was making people were seeing, <laughs> enjoying. Mm. Yeah, like, I was able to share my point of view well enough. Yeah, you were just feeling a bit lost. Yeah, and then now I feel like I'm able to do that a lot more and also be more, slightly more political. Ooh, interesting. Mm, Watch out 2024. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not as if my politics are in any way different or have in any way changed um, from how they have been on this channel She's For got the your, last however she's like, many years. She's like, I've got one million people's attention, now I can I, I stamp mean, my views. <laughs> attention. Um, but just being able to, I now have a system where I can respond a bit faster news events, whereas before it was like, oh, something happened. I'll make a video about that in two months time. I feel like I'm slowly getting a, enough of a system in place. Yeah. As a, as a company, as a Jessica out yeah. of the closet. I think it's because like when you have more... I'm getting that. When you have like a visual representation from like, in, in terms of like, for instance, like a subscriber number of like support for the things you're saying and doing, the negative comments and voices and opinions get more and more drowned out. Hmm. Or you feel like their weight is less now you that you also... have like an increased weight of the people who actually support you. Yeah, you also as a creator see them less on the back end. So if there are, you know, five comments in an hour's time, in an hour's period, and you've said something, and you know, four of them are kind of negatively, horribly homophobic, it's a bit like, wow, that is an overwhelmingly awful day for me. Mm. My gosh. Definitely in the beginning when and you then, were smaller, yeah. you would, we would notice it more. 
Well, I did have I did have a, a much bigger YouTuber make a, a not very nice video about me. Don't look for that. <laughs> um, at the at the very start, which really put me off and kind of scared me a bit. Mm. But then now it's more like okay, well, if you get thousands and thousands of comments in an hour, then you know it's fine because the those nasty comments are going to get drowned out by the yeah. hundreds of lovely ones. So that's nice. And also I really like making shorts. Yeah. I really enjoy it. It really works for me. So long story, long story short, Jessica feels a lot more justified, even though she didn't have to feel more justified, but she feels more secure, is probably the better word, to actually yes. give herself a break, yes. which is what she needs. And that is how she will manage her chronic health, because Previously, in the past, <laughs> it has not been well managed, and we have like you no. Know, she call? works until she crashes. Yeah, we have burnout <laughs> things. Like when Rupert was like, for instance, like just like you know, she'll pull her back. She'll just yeah. suddenly, for no reason, dislocate her arm. I say no reason. I mean, like, no reason. Like something physical happens that dislocates my arm. Yeah, you just like you. It's just that it's my general it's health is so. It's low. a combination of like you're exhausted, or and you're not, and you're overdoing it, and you're not. Your body's already tired, and mm. then you try and do something like lift up a heavy bag of shopping and your body's like, no. It's generally because I'm so tired, I'm not thinking through my actions, whereas I know that the way my body is, I have to always be mindful with it and I have to know, don't do that, yeah. don't I lift mean, that. Literally, don't it was only last night that I basically said to Jessica, like, you need to, rather than cramming in work in the evening, like if it's like, oh, I haven't met all the things on my list I wanted to do by 5.30 and now we have to do dinner and Rupert's bedtime and you know, she wants to spend time with Rupert and help with his bedtime. And then he doesn't go to sleep, say, till like eight. She's like, I'm like, oh, well, personally, I'm like, oh, I feel bad. I feel like I should do some like Instagram or I feel like I should like watch something educational and like expand my mind, but I'm so tired. I either just want to watch this like program on Netflix or I just want to go to bed. And Jessica's like, just totally do that, darling. You so deserve it. You're so tired. You've been looking after Rupert all day. Like just relax. Don't put so much pressure on yourself. And I'm like, okay. And I go and do what she told me to do. I don't find it too difficult to like you know, <laughs> to choose that option. Whereas she will never take her own advice. So She'll, though, instead, go back into the office, go back in front of the camera, like, sit down and research some stuff until, like, really late. Yeah, and I'll then, work from eight till midnight. And then she's like, slides into bed next to me. I'm pretty much already asleep. And then the next morning she wakes up with a migraine, tries to work a whole other day. And it's like this constant thing. And she's like, I don't, I'm just really struggling. I'm so tired. I'm not meeting any of my deadlines. And I'm like, yeah, because you need to, like, go to bed at, like, a proper time. Can we just say though, I do meet deadlines. I mean, her own personal <laughs> deadlines of like, I must complete these 10 things on my list today. And then like, yeah, so basically I've tried to reinforce it that doing a nighttime wind down routine and giving yourself some time to just play The Sims or read a book or have a bath is completely not just justified, it's not like a reward. You shouldn't see it as like a reward system for hard yeah. work in the day. It's part of actually like, your necessary it's necessary to your well-being and your life and your work i think it is very hard to to do you know when you're there are millions of working mothers out there who feel the same thing where it's like the time that i have when i'm working is taking me away from my child so i should be spending as much time as i can when i can with my child but then that's taking me away from work so then I should also be spending time doing my work and you just I just feel a lot like I'm failing in, in both. I think that's like a completely in common both regards. Common feeling when you're your own business. It's not just owner. working mothers, obviously, it's working I think parents. It's, yeah, I think it is for everyone, but it's probably easier when you get to go to an office. Yeah, I do wish I could just have a job where I'm like, I have gone to a place of work, I have completed my work. I have returned home. Yeah. And instead of. Because like, then kind of the option. I could of, just do a bit. I could just do a bit more. Yeah, like the option of, oh, he's crying, he needs me, is taken out of your hands because one, you wouldn't hear him cry. And also, it's like you're not, like, you're working under someone else's clock right now. Yeah. But we work under our own clock and, like, yeah, so it's difficult. But I think there's another layer to it of being the, the kind of secondary parent as well, where if you're the primary parent, there's. The thing if you're you're like the default parent, so I would spend more time with him when not working, mm -hmm. if that makes 
sense, but for him, because he sees you as his first parent, he often wants to be with you. I think it's literally just down to the amount of time. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, I know. Like, because like, I he's spend... with you when I'm yeah, because working, I... so therefore when I'm not working, he's like, yeah, fun mama time, fun mama time. Oh, but now I'm going to eat some food and do just a normal thing in my day, so I need mummy. And I'm like, I'm right here. Yeah. I can help. Or like, I need, I need in the night time, like, I need settling back to sleep. I need my mummy, like. And I'm just... like, I, I can do that. <laughs> I, know. I can, like, I can put him down to sleep in the evening. Perfectly fine. He'll be okay, fine, sure. Hmm. But then an hour later, if he wakes up, it's like, no, it has to be mummy. Yeah. I put you to sleep. Toddlers. <laughs> yeah. Fun, fun, fun. But I think when we have the next one, he and I are gonna. Yeah, I think that often happens with the older kid gets closer to like the secondary parent or like the working parent. You yeah. Say, like, because now the primary parent is with the baby. occupied with the baby quite a lot of the time. Yeah. My sister is older than me. And I think definitely she was closer to my dad growing up than I was because he spent probably more time like reading to her in the evenings. I don't really have many memories of my dad reading to me at bedtime. I was always just with my mummy. Like, you, know, you were such a mummy guy. I was, yeah. Is Christmas different this year now? Rupert's a toddler. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he's so actually, much. He's, yes. He he actually gets it more. I mean, first year he was six months old. Yeah. So he was like an adorable squishy blob. <laughs> Love him. <laughs> and um, and we just like dress. Oh my god, I need to do my do. annual Christmas you photo. Do. I've done it yet. Oh my gosh. And we just he wears like plaid pajamas. Um, she's done it twice. <laughs> she that is to do our the new third one. Our it is I said a new last tradition. year that I wanted to make it our family tradition Absolutely that I take photos tradition, of darling. Rupert and then hopefully the children in their little tartan pajamas in front of the tree every year. So yeah, so he was six months old, he was pretty cute, he sat in a high chair, he was like, he ate oh, his, he his Christmas dinner. He, he did eat he Christmas just dinner. Eating solid. Um, that kid was wow. He could he could eat. His head was so round. He was so round and, and so bald. Looking back at photos, we're like, <laughs> whose head is that? Like it's Rupert's face, but yeah. whose like head is that on? It's like a little just face. A ball. Ball. Oh, cool. <laughs> it's very bizarre. Um, and he just got passed around family members as they were like, oh my god, who's so squishy? You're so squishy and cute. No. Yeah. He was squishy and cute. Second Christmas. <laughs> he um, was 18 months old. Very much the first Christmas, it was more for us. Oh, like, yeah. It was just like, how oh, cute yeah. having a baby. And then the second Christmas was like, he kind of liked having family round. He kind of opened his presents a little bit, but he only opened like two or three Christmas, and then he found it a bit overwhelming. The, the Christmas period, so December, yeah. he found to be quite nice. <laughs> yeah. He like enjoyed December. The light. The light, the decorations. He didn't pull any baubles off the trees or anything. Christmas man, he called Santa. Oh, whenever yes. he saw a picture of Christmas, Christmas man. Christmas man. Oh, He'd be like, there's so Christmas. Well, he couldn't say full sentences. He was like, they're Christmas man. Christmas man. But now he says, uh, Santa Christmas. Yes. I think he still doesn't quite know what to expect because he just think he, he doesn't know like what. Christmas Day is he just knows that we've got, he says Christmas, is, it's not Christmas yet. So we're gonna have to make a real show and dance with the fact that it's Christmas oh, Day yeah. when it's Christmas It's gonna Day. have to be big. Because always it's gonna be like, it's not Christmas yet, it's gonna be like the 5th of January. <laughs> we're like, oh, God. oh boy. He's so sweet. He told me he wants to be a taxi driver when he's a man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll add that to the list. He's like, yes, because then I'll drive people around. I was like, yes, you will. <laughs> I would like to be a driver. He's like, I want to be a driver. A He's also driver. told me he wants to be a cooker. He wants to be a diver. He wants to be a daddy. He wants oh yeah, to that's be... quite a consistent one, a daddy. Oh yeah, he's six always children. said he wants to be a daddy to six children. Yeah. And we're like, okay, okay. Yeah, we're good luck with that one. that's for you, not for us. We'll just enjoy our six grandchildren. He's really into like role play things at the moment. So yes. my, one of my pre his presents this Christmas is a fireman outfit from oh. Granddad because we went to a toy shop to get a sticker book. But you know, of course. And he's usually pretty good at just like getting the one thing we've asked him to like find. But he found a fireman's hat. And he tried it on and he literally walked out the shop with it. <laughs> I'm wearing this home. He's like, I'm wearing this home. No, mummy. Wearing... This is my hat now and I'm wearing it home. He said, that one's too big. That one's for a bit much bigger, like, child. But, and I said, and also, Rupert, this was meant to be a secret. But 
Granddad's actually got you a fireman outfit for Christmas. <gasps> I didn't know you'd done that. And Jeannie was like, hmm. And I was like, yeah. And he won't want to. He wouldn't like it if he'd already got one. I he'd... don't know that that's A plus plus parenting, my love. Yeah, but it worked. <laughs> so then I was like, Dad, buy him a fireman outfit, quink. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what it was. Jessica, having ADHD, how do you handle the overwhelming amount of tasks and preparation that comes with Christmas? Do you find gift giving and thinking ahead of time difficult? Oh, friend. Goodness. Uh, this video gets released on Friday, the 22nd of December, and I'm quite sure I haven't bought all of my Christmas presents yet. I know. I think I feel... I, f I think I... I feel like I used to be an organised person, but that's actually a lie I tell myself. Or <laughs> I know, same, because I also feel like I used to be really organised, quite tidy. Um, you were I, never like, tidy! And, no, and I think I was like really quite, so I felt like I was like good at like socialising, organised like parties and things. I'm like, all these things I suffer I with now. I can't believe. And I'm like, you organised parties and chose to see people. Yeah, I used to host. You chose to be around multiple people. Yeah. Getting any kind of social gathering together I used to organize with her is like pulling teeth. Where's that wife? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> but can I just say, the first time I ever went to your room that you were renting when we met, Yeah. it was off it orders was mess. Tiny. It was tiny. <laughs> It was horrendous. No, it wasn't. It literally yes, it was. Only, you couldn't close your cupboard door. The only thing in, I had literally that room was a double bed and uh -huh. a wardrobe. You uh -huh. couldn't like, and this much space between them. Mm. And like a window entirely on one side. Sure. I love gift giving, but I do find thinking ahead of time difficult. I think some years I'm like really quite on it and I feel really proud of all the gifts that I've thought of and gone mm. out and bought. And I've, but this year I feel like, like you said, it's just kind of like, Happened. Yeah. Christmas just happened. Yeah. I mean, what have you got me? I'm gonna tell you what I've got you. All right. Well, what have you got me? Well, I don't know. I keep asking you what you want. <laughs> I told you the embroidery pen, and I've asked you like hundreds of times which one. Everyone asks me what to get me for Christmas. You know, if you get me a donation to UF UNFPA. Yeah, but I don't need. You actually want to rip? I know what you like. You're like a magpie. You want to actually <laughs> unwrap something that's glittery and special and lovely and pretty. You could get me a really pretty box and put a donation to UNFPA inside it. What are you going to do with this box? You have so many boxes and baskets <laughs> in this house. <laughs> I try not to hoard and be like, a box, a, bo a box will mean more things in it. Anyway, we're going to call it a night because it's actually getting late and it's after eight. Yeah. And Jessica's meant to be doing this new nighttime routine. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful season and a merry, jolly, lovely time if you're celebrating Christmas or not. Thank you for hanging out with us. Yeah, for thanks for listening to us for half an hour. I'm sorry we didn't really Half an hour, I think it was longer than that. 45 minutes of Thank God. chill. Thank God for the power of Hanging editing. out Christmas time. Anyway, if you'd go. like more of us, <laughs> you can find us on Instagram at Jessie and Claude. No, we don't talk. Let's go. Let's leave.